Hello everyone, and welcome to a MathPax video where I'll be showing you how to do Boolean multiplication on matrices. Now, we normally want to do this when the matrices represent relations in order to find the transitive closure or the composition. I'll get into that in a future video, but for now I'll show you just how to do the multiplication itself. For a confusing topic, the process is actually fairly simple. We can write down the answer directly if we go through the algorithm correctly and use some thought. So in order to build the first row, first column of the answer matrix, we take a look at the first row and first column of the two given matrices, just as we would for a regular multiplication. In this case though, since the matrices are Boolean, we only have zeros and ones. We look at the first row of the first matrix and see which positions there are ones. If there's a one in the corresponding position, in any of the uh, in any of the positions on the corresponding second matrix, then we'll write a one here. Since our only one in the first row of the first matrix is in the second position, and we have a zero in the corresponding position here, we write zero. For the first row second column, we do the sim we do a similar thing. We look at the first row and the second column. Again, we only have a one in the second position, and we have a zero in the second position here. So we have another zero. For this third position, again, there's a zero in the second position, so we complete our row of zeros. We do the same thing again to find the second row, but we use the second row of the first matrix. Now, in the first position of the second row here, we have a one, and we do have a one matching here. So we can write a one. Even though we also have a one in the third position and no one in this third position, that doesn't matter. We only need one match. For the second row, second column, we have the same match. This first position, this first position. And now for the third row, or for the third column, we have a one in the third position and a one in this third position. So we complete our row of ones. Try to do the final row by yourself. I'll, you should pause the video if you're gonna do that. So we have zero, one, one as the third row here. So we have only ones in the second and third position and only zeros in the corresponding positions over here, which means that we're left with a zero. For the second position, we have, a, we have a one, and we have a one in the third position of the third row, and the third position of the second column. That gives us a one. For the final entry, the third row, third column, we note that we do have a one in the third position here, and we do have a one in the third position here. So again, that's the third row, third column, third position, third position. This completes the answer. Now, it can, be, it can be a bit confusing the first few times you do it, but I recommend retrying this example if you found it confusing and after a while it'll become routine. Thanks a lot for watching, and that concludes our example. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want to, and feel free to leave a comment with, future, with suggestions for future topics or any ways that I can improve. Have an integrate day.